Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Watch Me Wrench with your host, Mr. Wrench. In today's episode, I am going to show you guys how you can keep your car running cooler for just a hundred bucks. How am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to install a component that's going to allow me to control the fan. This way I can control the temperature of the coolant, keeping the engine cool, obviously. Now, why do I want to do this? Well, when I was at the racetrack and I was waiting online, there were a lot of cars in front of me. I saw the temperature gauge reading up to 205 degrees. And for me, that's a little too hot. Now, no, the car wasn't overheating. That's well within specs. And some people say these LS motors like heat. But me personally, I think this car runs better when the temperatures are at 190. One, between 185 and 195. So, with this component, I'm going to be able to bypass the factory computer. The factory computer has the fan engaging, I think it's about 203 degrees or 205 degrees. That's when the fan kicks on. So, normally the car hits 205, the fan comes on, the temperatures drop to about 190, and then it just repeats the cycle. But while I'm waiting online at the track, I want to be able to have control of that. So, let's go to the bench. Let's take a look at this component and then we'll go over some of its features. I'll be back. Alright guys, so here it is. This is a fan controller module. And this is made by Casper's Electronics. That's the part number 102159. And this only cost... There was no tax and there was no shipping. I got it directly from Casper Electronics. This cost me exactly $100.88. So how does it work? Well, it's pretty simple. This is literally plug and play. You don't have to run a power wire, nor do you have to run a ground wire. So basically there's a wire harness running to the factory fan motor. So you will unplug it. You will then insert this. You will plug the factory wire harness in this end and then this will plug into the wire that's coming out of the fan motor and then you take this little module and you plug it right there to that end and then on the back of here you just plug in your switch now if you take a look at the switch, it has three settings. You got this one hash mark, you got the zero, which is I guess for neutral, and then the two hash marks. So if you're just driving around and you want the car to operate normally and let the computer have control of the fan, you just leave it in the middle. Leave it to this setting here. If you want to engage your fan at a low speed, you just click it like that. And if you want to engage it on a high speed, just click the side with the two hash marks. So, you could let the computer do it, or you can control it. And also, if after you make a pass, if your car's a little hot, when you return to the pits, you could leave the fan running a little longer if you want. But don't leave it running too long, you will kill the battery. And the instructions even say you will. So here are the instructions. If you want to pause your screen and read it, go right ahead. I did find a discrepancy in the instructions. I don't know if the manufacturer realized it or not. It's not a big deal. But over here it says the black wire is high and the green wire is low. So you would think that the one hash mark would be for low and the two hash mark would be for high, as it's illustrated here in this diagram. But then if you look over here, this would be low according to this diagram, but they have it going to the black wire, and the black wire is for high. And then over here, this is supposed to be high, but they have the green wire running to it, and according to this, the green is low. And my switch is also, my switch is basically the same as this diagram. So I got the black going to the one hash mark and the green going to the two hash marks. But it's not a big deal. If you want the two hash marks to be high, 
just flip the green and black wire around. They just unplug. So that's it. I'll figure out which is high and which is low. It's not a big deal. So now let's take a look underneath the car and see what I have to do to install this. I'll be back. Okay, so here we are underneath the car. Here's your fan. Here's the wire running to the fan motor. Uh, the wire is also first run into this unit, this module here. I believe this is uh, to dissipate heat. So, if you follow this wire up, there is the plug. So you just have to undo that. Easier said than done. I can't even get my hand up in there. Yeah. Maybe I could remove this. Or this. Actually, if I remove this, this will give me more room. How do you remove that? Oh, okay, there's a hex screw right up here. It looks like it just snaps in place there. Okay, so let me try to remove this. And I'll see if that gives me enough room to access that connection right there. All right, I'll be back. Okay, so I've got this out of the way. Just that one screw. It's a little tricky to get a tool in there, but I was able to. Now I can undo that plug. I can reach my hand up in there, as you can see. All right. So once I unplug that, then I will basically just insert this in between. That's pretty much it. All right, I'll be back. Wish me luck. Okay, so I was able to separate the connection. And now I will just insert this in between that and that up there. All right, I'll be back. All right, guys, so there you have it. I have the uh, new wire harness plugged into the factory harness. And then plug the wire coming from the uh, fan motor into the other end. So now I just have to take this end, plug it to here, and then plug this to here. And then I should be able to just test it right here. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so it's about 10 seconds later. I've got that wire harness connected to the module, and then the switch I got connected to the other side of the module. So let's test it out. <coughs> I'm going to hit the one hash mark. Ah, oh, there you go. Check it out. So that feels like low. And now let's hit the two hash marks. Oh, yeah. Awesome. So the one hash mark is low, the two hash mark is high, the instructions have just the wiring listed wrong. The black is in fact low and the green is in fact high, despite the instructions saying the opposite. All right. So now you just got to run this through the car and find a home for this switch. And that's honestly going to be the hardest part of this whole job. I don't know if I'm going to show how to run this through the car. Maybe I will. All right, I'll be back. All right, guys, so I ran the wire through the car. The instructions say to do this on the passenger side, but I did it on the driver's side. Um, it's pretty easy. Uh, you just got to take your time. I haven't tied it up yet. But you can see the gray wire here. So I'll tie it up. I snuck it up and under. And then what I did was I took this cover off. I got this screw here. It's got like a little snap here. And then you have to slide this back and then out to get this cover out. So I ran it up under. I pulled this back. Pushed it under. Under this cover. And then, I undid this screw, and I just gently pulled 
back on this cover here and then I ran the wire up and under up and over this little bump here you can see the wire up in there and then I just peeled this back this has got like a sticky double-sided tape you can see the glue there so just pull this back a little bit then pop off this cover this just has like two or three clips so I ran the wire over this bump here peeled this back tucked it up through here I didn't have to undo this one pulled this cover off and ran it down and underneath the dashboard now if you didn't have this large connector here I would have uh, fed the uh, wire through here those are the uh, hood latch cables but I didn't want to cut the wire I was contemplating cutting it would have been a lot easier but I didn't cut it so now I just gotta find a home and a place to mount this all right guys so I think I found a spot where I'm gonna mount this I wanted to put it right in there. It fits perfect. It's an exact fit. Wedges in there nice and tight. However, I use that for my battery tender. Now I do have another 12 volt port here. So I tried my battery tender here some people say it works, but I was watching my battery tender, and it was not working when I put it here. But some people say you could charge it from here, but mine was not working. So as much as I want it there, I think I'm going to put it here. So I think this is where I'm going to put it, right there. <clears throat> Um, over here the switch is definitely too wide it won't fit it will overlap one of these um, you know I don't know if you remember if you watch that video there's hardly any room in there and the back on this is pretty wide um, so I guess it's going to go here I guess the next step is to try to figure out, I know they sell a tool, it's like a T-handle, you stick it in there, you stick it in there and somehow it releases two tabs, and then you can just pull this out without having to take this apart, but I don't have that. <clears throat> I'm going to disconnect the battery. I'm going to stick some small Allen keys in there. I'll stick two. One down there and one up there where the other hole is. And see if I can just pull this out. If I can just pull this out, that would save a lot of time and aggravation. Alright, let me get to it and I'll be back. Alright guys, welcome back. So it is like a month later since my last clip. I initially wanted to put... The switch in the cigarette outlet that's over there. I use that 12 volt source for my trickle charger that the car came with. I had tried using this port over here, but it actually didn't work. And some people say it can but it didn't work on mine and when I pulled this one out this one has two pins on the back of the cigarette outlet that one has three pins and three wires so you got two wires and two pins and three wires and three pins so perhaps that third wire is for the trickle charger I don't know this car sits for like three four weeks the battery always dies 
Um, some people think it's because the OnStar is running and updating or getting off a signal. So I had to move the switch to over here. But the problem was, was the cable wasn't long enough. Um, where is it? I don't even know. Yeah. So the cable wasn't long enough, which is not a big deal. I could have extended it. But I didn't have this gauge wire, and Amazon, right now we're going through this pandemic, and Amazon didn't have this wire that could be shipped right away. I could have gotten it, but I would have had to wait like four weeks. Um, so instead I just called the manufacturer, Casper, and I asked them to make me a longer harness a switch harness, they only charge 20 bucks, and they mailed it to me right away, I got it in like three days. So that was my faster option. So, to hide this, it's very simple, I took off the two screws here and here that hold this lower panel in, and I just pulled it back, and I'm just going to double, I'm just going to put some double sided tape and tape it to the inside there. And we'll be done with this project, which turned out to be a nightmare. All right, so let's test it out now. Oh, it's low. That's high. Okay. So that's it. So I'm going to tuck it up in there. And we'll be done with this project. All right, I'll be back. Okay, so we're all done. I got that cover back, bolted back on. I got these two screws back in. So how did I run this? Very simple. You don't have to go taking apart anything. Pop this cap off this cap. You have two torque screws. Take them out. Once you take them out, you have enough room to lift this like two, three inches. So I just lifted it gently, made sure I didn't pull on any of the wires, just pulled it up and then I just ran the wire harness on the inside up here and then I used I used a uh, velcro tape not double sided tape I fixed the uh, brains to the unit back here so that's it alright so that's it I'm done. Yes. And the best part is, you know, you don't see any of the wire. I hit it well. I mean, if you look, it's right there. But I think I'm going to tidy that up. Maybe get some black wire loom. I have it, actually. But you don't see it, you know, running through any of the panels. You don't see it through the, through the door jam. All right. So that's it. We are done. Nice and neat, clean install. clean that. All right, so that's it, guys. Another job done. Once again, Mr. Wrench was the guinea pig for you all. So that's it. All right, guys. Remember, if I could do this, you could do this. So pick up a wrench, get to wrenching. You just might save yourself a buck or two, and please continue to watch me wrench. And All right, guys. Thank you for watching, and uh, be safe out there. Later.